speaker to the constitutional implications of the conduct of the four individuals involved and, and concluded that the provisions of Article 971G and H, they had vacated their seat as members of parliament of the eighth parliament of the Republic of Ghana. Article 971G and H reads as follows. In fact, Article 971 provides that a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. G says that if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his elections to parliament to join another party or seek to remain in parliament as an independent member. H reads, if he was elected as a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party. Order 18 of the Standing Orders of Parliament Mandatory places sole responsibility on the Speaker to communicate vacancy of the seat in Parliament. Order 18 reads as follows. The Speaker shall inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1, B to E, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. I also cited the Saturday 7th November 2020 precedent where a similar fact occurred coincidentally involving the same Honorable Andrew Esiama Amwako. The then NPP Member of Parliament had gone to file his nominations for the December 2020 parliamentary elections as an independent candidate. Based on, based on these, those facts, Honorable Andrew Esiama Amwako's party, the New Patriotic Party, the NPP, wrote to the then speaker, Professor Reverend Mike Aaron Okwe, to communicate those facts. In that communication to the speaker, the NPP indicated that honorable membership of the new patriotic party. This led to his immediate removal from the parliament by right honorable Professor Reverend Mike Aaron Okwe, the then Speaker of Parliament. Right Honorable Mike Aaron Okwe concluded that Article 97.1 automatically kicked, kicked in without the need for any court order. Indeed, no one legally questioned his decision. My statement drew some comments from the floor as allowed by the standing orders of this House. After listening to the comments of members which often turned into argument, the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Alban Sumana Kingsford Bagbin, requested for two days to ponder over the statement, comments and argument that ensued to enable him give a considered response. On Tuesday, 17th October 2024, the Speaker responded to the statement and agreed that the fact contained in the statement were indeed true. This is because the notice of pool issued by the Electoral Commission of Ghana in respect of those constituencies confirmed that the said individuals had indeed engaged in the conduct alleged in my statement. On the basis of this fact, not being in dispute, Mr. Speaker proceeded to evaluate the circumstances and decided that their conduct breached Article 971G and H. Press one to order 18 of the standing orders. The right honorable speaker communicated to the house the vacancies of the four seat. For the avoidance of doubt, the speaker's decision to declare the four seat vacant is lawful exercise on his, of his responsibilities deprived from, uh, derived from the 1992 constitution and the standing orders of parliament. The effect of the speaker's declaration is that currently, we no longer have an independent member of parliament. The MPP has 135 members of parliament only. The NDC has 136 members of parliament. And there is no second deputy speaker of parliament. This effectively alters the configuration of the eight parliaments significantly. The NPP group in parliament are now the minority caucus as defined by the relevant sections of or the cis of the standing orders of parliament. 
the minority caucus means members of the party or parties that have the second largest number of seats in parliament. Honorable colleagues, the NDC MPs in parliament now constitute the majority caucus in line with the standing orders of Ghana's parliament. Yeah. 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 Fellow countrymen and women, the NDC now constitute the majority caucus in this eighth parliament. We will jealously protect our new majority status and will not bow, retreat, nor surrender our lawfully end status. Yes. Yes. I repeat, fellow countrymen and women, the NDC now constitute the majority caucus in this eighth parliament. We will jealously protect our newly majority status and will not bow, retreat, nor surrender our lawfully end status. Yeah. We will also not abdicate our responsibility to the people of Ghana, no matter what. Nothing, absolutely nothing, will change this position. We are fortified that the proceedings of Parliament shall not be impeached or questioned in any court or place out of Parliament. Any interference with the business of Parliament is unlawful, unacceptable, and shall be resisted. We have never hidden our position that we are in Parliament for the ordinary people of Ghana. It is indeed true that we will use our new majority numbers to benefit Ghanaians by introducing private members' bill to remove the e-levy and to reduce the suffering of the people of Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. It is also true that we will use our new majority to remove the Bertin tax and other nuisance taxes. Yeah. Already, this MPP government has made Ghana a high tax regime and, and that it is affecting the survival of businesses and the people of Ghana. We assure you that we will use our new majority to protect businesses and the people of Ghana as we have always maintained. We are confident that the right honorable speaker has acted fairly, firmly and lawfully in a matter that is perfectly within his province. Speaker Bagben has had a distinguished and unprecedented 32-year career in Parliament of Ghana. Right Honorable Alban Babin is a courageous and resolute leader. We stand with him, pledge our support, and urge him to protect the dignity and sanctity of the Parliament of Ghana. In the same vein, we call on Ghanaians to stand by the Speaker and resist oppressors rule. From day one, we have not reneged on our fight for the people of Ghana. The opportune time has come, and we are determined to immediately commence the process to reverse the Kufuado Baumia mess and put our country back on track. The people of Ghana can count on us and be rest assured that the NDC majority will protect the interests of the people of Ghana. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Leader, uh, Majority Leader. Uh, we will now take questions uh, from the media. Uh, yes. Thank you very much, Leader. Yes, um, leader, my name is Kuku Asante from Joy News. So, Leader, on Friday, the Supreme Court unanimously, the Supreme Court on Friday unanimously ruled to I, stay... I didn't get, did you, did yes. you say the Majority Leader? I'm filling the question to the Majority Leader. Say leader. You say leader. Let him continue. So, 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 Yes, more, more questions. Uh -huh, yes. Uh. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh -huh. Yes. Right. 
My name is Simon again, uh, the Dean of the Parliamentary Press Corps. Uh, since the, uh, the statement or the decision of the Speaker to declare those four seats vacant, MPP has finally admitted that Professor Michael Quay ruling was wrong. Why is the new majority pushing for a wrong president in Parliament? Thank you. Uh, well, let's get a third one, then we respond. Anyway, uh, there's no hand up now, so we will take the response. Um, to the question uh, about the purported, purported directive of the Supreme Court to suspend a decision of uh, Parliament, uh, we are not aware of any law or any constitutional provision that enables anybody to suspend a decision of the Speaker in Parliament properly constituted. What we know is that under Article 2 of the Constitution and Article 130 of the Constitution, the Supreme Court has jurisdiction to make a declaration as to whether or not an act is consistent or inconsistent with a provision of the Constitution. But to suspend a decision of Parliament or a directive of the Speaker in Parliament, we are not aware of the legal basis of a conduct like that. Be that as it may, we as parliamentarians act on the basis of communication coming to us from the speaker. We don't hear things in the news and act on them, or side copies of uh, records of proceedings in any court on social media and act on them. We act on the basis of communication coming to us from the right honorable speaker. And if that communication says we should walk into the sea, we walk into the sea. Because we listen only to the speaker and nobody else in relation to the integrity, the legality, and the appropriateness of what has happened in the chamber of parliament. So that is my brief response to you in terms of your, your question. And the second question, which relates to uh, the, uh, the president that has been set by my Okwe, and why we in the majority today will be seeking to benefit from that uh, president. I will say that when Michael Quay gave his ruling in 2020, there were many who disagreed with him, and there were many who benefited from that uh, ruling. But when uh, Speaker Bagwin responded to the statement made by our now majority leader and went ahead pursuant to order 18 to uh, communicate the vacancy of the four seats. In responding, he made some comments also. And his commentary was so persuasive that even those of us who question the propriety of Michael Quay's uh, action in 2020 became convinced that indeed Michael Quay was right. I'm one of those that in 2020 publicly disagreed with uh, Michael Quay. I believe it was because Michael Quay did not articulate his position very well. And when Speaker Bagwin responded to the statement and uh, communicated the vacancy of the seats, and in doing so made some statements. 
his arguments or his commentary in relation to Article 971G was very, very persuasive, very, very persuasive, especially his position that if Article 97 is applicable to the next parliament, then it becomes a useless provision. It's not necessary. And those who provided for it in the Constitution could not have intended to engage in a useless exercise. So I, I, I can assure you that we are not convinced because Michael Quaid did it. We are convinced because we now see wisdom in the provision in the Constitution and the action of those who drafted our Constitution. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, we take three more. We take three, three more. Uh, we come this way. We, we go. Them, yes, sir. Thank you, leader. My name is Arina Kwanza, and I work with that <coughs> My question relates for uh, the third year. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, Peter Baldwin cited evidences of this and this, the protest were vacated would it not be better for the speaker to have heard from them before acting? The, the argument of the fact that they acted for nothing because officially they have not received letters from their political parties. Thank you very much. Uh, next. I want to find out if they're online that the speaker decided to uphold the Supreme Court's decision both the matter, both of these doing. We'll cross that bridge when we get it. Uh, next. Thank you. My name is Greg Kuhn, I'm for Ghana and East.com. My simple question, I'm a bit worried. The, this particular parliament started with the fight. And <laughs> started with what? And, uh, right. Oh, okay. And looking at where you are going, recall the lifespan of this parliament, and okay, would you end with the fight? <laughs> Eh? No, 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 no. If we are fighting, we are fighting against poverty, corruption. Thank you. The last one, then the leadership button. Thank you. Your colleague, Anthony Maki, Martin, argues that you made a statement and that decisions are taken if it is a motion. You also speak to the speaker's ruling is against the orders of the house. What is your response? Okay, let me start. Uh, yeah. uh, as always, I'll, I'll be starting, colleagues who fill in. Um, thank you very much for the questions. Um, let me start with the one from Adam FM, Adam TV. These persons in question, the four former MPs, um, they were in the house, some of them. They have representations as leadership. They are either with a majority or minority. None of them denied the fact that they have contested as independent candidates or have moved from uh, independent to a, a, a political party. So what else do we want the speaker to do? So, and, and the evidence are out there. They are colleagues. We know they have contested. It's a matter of fact. So it's not something that someone is sitting somewhere and concocting a story or, or as such. It is a matter of fact, and they could not deny it. To date, they've not been able to deny it. Number two, um, you raised the issue with what my colleague, um, Honorable Afenio Marken, um, uh, apparently, they have said. I doubt he, he made that kind of that kind of um, pronouncement, because obviously, um, it is not up to him to interpret the standing orders of the house. He can make some speak to it, but the decision is not up to him. It is for the speaker to interpret the standing orders of our house. So he, he can rule him out of order um, with what he said. And then the last one, as to whether we'll, we will fight. The only thing we'll fight has to do the fight against corruption. We'll fight corruption, but we'll fight. We don't intend to fight uh, in the chamber. We don't intend to fight. We only fight corruption and protect the Constitution. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, just to add to that, um, if you notice on that fateful day of the beginning of this parliament, it was government that ordered the, the military and the police to enter the chamber and assault members of parliament. Indeed, my colleague, Honorable, uh, our, our uh, uh, colleague, filed a motion for those individuals of which we have details of those military officers and what they did in the chamber. But I can guarantee you it's not yet sunset on those issues. Just to uh, uh, add, we are aware that between yesterday and today, government, some elements of government have had a meeting again to deploy the military to the precincts of parliament to enter the tent. We are aware of that. We can just ask those uh, around the, the Accra Sports Stadium that at a point in time tomorrow, they repeat the same uh, misconduct. We can guarantee them the people of this country are sovereign. If you wear a military uniform, a police uniform, you work to the constitution. But they should be aware that the life of this government is less than two months. They will, be, they, will, they will have to account for their conduct in 2020 and whatever they do tomorrow. But they shouldn't be surprised the people of this country would react forcefully to any misconduct of anybody in uniform on Tuesday and beyond. Thank you. Uh, we take the last batch of questions, if you haven't. Yes. And then after that, we'll do the three versions. Yeah. Tuesday, both of you are returning to the chamber. I'm talking about both sides. And of course, the decisions are varied. Mm -hmm. Doesn't whatever happens on Tuesday rest with the speaker? Do you have indication as to how the speaker will allow things to find out? Because the decision as to whether what happened at the court holds or doesn't rest with the speaker. And what would be your expectation of the speaker? Thank you. Uh, next. Next question. Should we say that as a final question? Yes. Before we yes. do that. Yes. Okay. Look, I'm not the Speaker of Parliament, and I cannot preempt the Speaker. I don't know his intention. All what I can assure you is that the NDC majority believes that we are the majority, and we'll do just, try, just that. We'll protect what has been given to us lovely. Nothing more, nothing less. And apart from that, let's wait for the Speaker. Thank you. Okay, uh, three versions. Yes, uh, our colleague, the Deputy Majority Leader, Honorable Amako Kibwa, will do uh, a short account uh, presentation. May body tough on the crowd. Majority Leader, I can you know, and say, four members of Parliament, Honorable Kwachiaka, Honorable Asante, Honorable Mamde Morris, and uh, Honorable Andrew Esiema, four members of parliament, we, I, 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 I call, Honorable Esiema, if independent, I could join MPP, we are filing, three other members, no, if political party, we are filing independent. We are not, we are not, constitution, no, article 97, 1, G and H, HSS, or no, HSS, HSS, or more vacate or more seat na speak and so what would to me say or tisa and say or ma yet to a parliament or say and yeah stand no dana and no tina speaker to two sana more yes speaker yeah nina a woman requires so said na a saw ye never no san in tino a my yay and dc for an i am not no say see ya yeah, yeah, majority. You want those who ask the MPP for, we show them Ramu Nwa to see and we just say, yeah, yeah, oh ha, I do a sense ya. Na MPP for ye, oh ha, I do a sense enum. Ama ye ya ko ye majority. Na sa majority na ye 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 mra kwainso ne di ama ye. Ne nya diya ye be tutu mo fom. So ne leader kai no ye be jina se ye ye majority ne a ye ne ma majority ye. Ye be ye ye ma ebe boa ma gana main na ye ma obia eme tie tie ye mfa ho di so ye jidi se speaker ni decision na o make ye no e mra kwan so e obia en to be se sano na ye be jina se ye majority going forward mi da ma na ye majority nso ye nya no 
ye be bo modin ase sa america to ye de be ye niam bi a ye nim se ha gana fo for example ta sa many yen bi bi ti se ye levy bi bi se betting tax ye be jutu ana modin de de ten ten ma make sure se sa america ni nyira ya se sa na ama gana fo mo ato Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the majority in Parliament has just addressed a press conference to set. That's the. And uh, uh, you're still live here on TV3, and that was the press conference addressed by the leadership of the NDC caucus in this eighth parliament, Dr. Kesela Tufo Singh, flanked by uh, Emmanuel Makofiboa and Gavin Kwame Agoja. They were going to cross over back to that particular venue in parliament where my colleague Eric Maone is uh, covering this for us here on TV3 and across all media general platforms. Maona. Uh, what's what's been happening the, the reactions as we speak now Let's try and get a few, few reactions in terms of what it is that has happened uh, today here and now. the live coverage of that press conference that was addressed by the leader of the NDC caucus in parliament, Dr. Kesela Tufos, he's been forcefully making that point that as far as the NDC uh, caucus in parliament is concerned, they are the majority of this eighth parliament and he premises it on a number of things to the extent that the notice of poll published by the electoral commission does indicate that indeed the decision by these persons to go independent have actually uh, been captured, plus the decision by Andre Siama, the former member of parliament, to contest on the ticket of the NPP has actually been captured and published by the notice of poll by the Electoral Commission going into this election, thus defeating that argument that their decision impacts on a future election. Also, the decision by the other three uh, also has been published and indeed acknowledged by the notice of poll by the Electoral Commission, Koja Sante, and then also Cynthia Morrison, and then also you have the, uh, the NDC Member of Parliament who has decided to also go independent uh, in specifically the Western region, uh, and all of that has been played out as we speak at the moment. They also make the point about the effect of the Speaker's decision tilting and in fact flipping the, the leadership of this uh, Parliament to the NDC becoming the majority because now effectively they have 136 seats and then also the NPP having 135 because they have lost three seats based on the speaker's ruling and decision uh, three days ago. Also, uh, to the, they make the point about any interference will not be countenanced and accepted by anyone or any other person in, in uniform. In fact, Governor Kwame Aboja makes that claim that they are aware that there has been a meeting between the elements of government and some persons in the military to allegedly disrupt the sitting of parliament on Tuesday. He, he references the tent. The tent because, as we do know, the, the, as the, the chamber of parliament is 
currently being renovated. And so Parliament has so far, since they resumed, been sitting at the Accra International Conference Centre. Uh, that's where that tent that he refers to is located. And he says that they are aware of a meeting between government and some element of the military to disrupt that. That's one thing that we're going to keep an eye on as well. He calls on Ghanaians to support the Speaker of Parliament to execute the rule of law. And then they've already given a clear indication of what they're going to do with the majority status that they have. One, they're going to introduce a private member's bill to remove the e-levy and also the betting tax. So they have served notice already of what they intend to do with this majority status. And these are the two bills that they, in fact, the, this tax bills that they intend to have it removed. And this is a matter of political, as it were, implication because both John Mahama and Dr. Dramanik, that's, that's also Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, have both promised that they, were, they are going to remove the e-levy and the betting tax. But Joseph, let's go back into uh, how the, the numbers look and the representation pair the argument of both sides right now and so there are two views now and we know that uh, the parliament as we've had it constituted since 2017 this is how it has looked so far and we've tagged this as before declaration because this was how the seats looked before the declaration by the speaker of parliament and so before the speaker made a declaration the ndc had 137 seats the mpp 137 and there was one independent candidate andrew esiama who is the mp for formena and so depending on which school of thought you believe in this was what we've been running with for more than three years now. Now, the Speaker of Parliament did make a declaration that changed the situation and brought about this particular makeup. And so the NDC had 136 and the NPP 135 with no independence candidates. And we had earlier explained to our viewers that, look, there was no need for a by-election because per the Constitution, when it's less than three months to a general election, you do not have to conduct a by-election when a vacancy occurs. And so those are the, school, the two views that we have. The problem now is that the Supreme Court on Friday basically restored the situation back to this position, saying that, look, per what has been carried out by the Speaker in Parliament, it was appropriate that he had held on to knowing that there was a pending case. And the Supreme Court basically restored the parliamentary makeup to the situation that we had from 2017, where the MPP had 137, the NDC was 137, one independent candidate. Now we've heard... The NDC said that, look, they are not working with this. They are still sticking to what we have in this particular situation. We know the MPP, on the other hand, have also indicated that they are also not working with this arrangement. They are also working with the previous one. So the question that is on the minds of everyone, <laughs> if you are wondering, is what is happening on Tuesday. We've seen this play out before in the very early days of the parliament. Uh, when the election of the speaker took place, we saw that the MPP side had made a point that they were the majority. The NDC had also said they were also the majority. And so eventually we know that the Speaker of Parliament did come in and declared the MPP to be the majority by virtue of the fact that the independent member of parliament, Andrew Esiama, was caucusing with the MPP. And so that was what restored some calmness in the system. And so once again, we all know that it may all come down to whatever decision the Speaker of Parliament will take on Tuesday. With the reason being that the, both sides of the House have decided to insist on holding the majority. And if that's it's not settled by the Speaker of Parliament. They, they may have to settle it on their own. And clearly, they've taken entrenched positions, Alfred. Uh, let's go back to Parliament, where Gavin Spamia Boja, uh, who is a member of Parliament for the Adaklo Constituency, is speaking to Eric Mayonek, but for a quick one, uh, we'll, we'll hear from him now. Government, if government doesn't bring that, uh, but, but for attempts to reduce, you might struggle to outrightly remove these taxes. How do you respond to no, that? No, there's nothing in the Constitution that says we can't, we can't do that. That we can reduce... We can't increase. That is basically what... what so you seek to reduce? We, yeah, removal of uh, E-Levy is a reduction. It's not an increase. We are not imposing tax on anybody. It is, it is, we are removing tax, so we can do that. In, in any case, you remember sometimes when they bring appropriation bill, we can take things out of it. Outside of that, there's, there's a concern of the numbers. 136 as against 135. They make the argument that you might not form the clear majority based on the 275 original constitution of the 8th parliament. Very good question. That is why we said that the new composition of parliament is no longer 275. The physical number of people in parliament now is less than four. Less by four. So the, the calculation in terms of a clear majority would be the people available divided by the, 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 the number you need uh, to take a decision. So that doesn't even come into, into question. So 
you will be able to yes, carry out 136 is the, the new majority 135 is the new minority concerns of chaos continue to be raised i'm sure you've attempted to respond the to only, that the only chaos would be when our colleagues who are in the minority now refuse to accept that they're in the minority you understand that's not that's, you know, so this is quite clear the interesting thing is that no member of the media is denying the fact that these four colleagues actually have filed which is the basis of what the law the constitution is talking about all of you have confirmed that our colleagues have filed and they have crossed the line and they are in breach of article 97 1 uh, g and h so that is not in, in, in question that is why some people even query what some of the things that they claim came from the court which i'm not i'm not aware so there's no problem about about uh, fighting nobody is going to fight you and i know where the majority sits in parliament but the majority sits where on the right hand side of the speaker and then the minority sits on the, the left hand side is that not the case let's get to the house so we shall see what will happen thank you very much that's the that's the majority whip uh, speaking to us uh, at this particular point in time and uh, the, the, the details really uh, laid quite bare what to expect on Tuesday all eyes will be fixated on what happens on Tuesday following this particular address and uh, Governor Kwame Aguja making his way out of the uh, auditorium right now where this news conference just happened like I said the expectation and all eyes will be on Tuesday October 22nd where the house will reconvene and then we can get an understanding as to really what will what will happen they say that they only receive official communication on all matters from the speaker they are not aware of any such ruling by the Supreme Court which uh, has stayed the, the, the speakers ruling on on Thursday and so we wait to see but right now I believe there will be a lot of confusion in the minds of people watching at home the big question who is the majority who is the minority well that's a question that possibly could be answered on Tuesday when the house reconvenes and the direction of the speaker most importantly uh, will be crucial in determining the way forward back to you in the studio Alfred Eric Mawana Egberta there. So it's quite clear the indication of what the direction is for the now uh, majority caucus in this eighth parliament as has been forcefully uh, put out this afternoon by the NDC caucus in parliament. They are quite clear in their minds that based on the fact that all these four persons who have uh, three of them giving indication that they are actually contesting independent as has been captured by the notice of poll by the Electoral Commission Plus. Andre Siama, who has decided that he's going to contest on a ticket of the MPP, now also captured on the notice of poll, then there is no basis to contest the decision as was communicated by the Speaker, Peter Kwachaka, Memphis Central, and then you also have all the other two persons and I mentioned earlier, Cynthia Morrison and Kujia Sante, who have all declared their intentions to also contest as independent candidates. It is on the basis of this that the question about Koro comes through as to whether, Joseph, that communication, that because of this majority that we have, we are going to use our majority to have the betting tax and the e-levy tax removed. Can that be done? I mean, it's, it's, we, we are getting an indication from the interview Marina had with Gavin Kwame Abuja, the kind of interpretation that the NDC wants to use. And it's a very interesting view because there are two quorums that we deal with generally in Parliament. So there's the general quorum for transacting business and there's the quorum for taking decisions. And so in terms of the quorum for transacting business normally, it's one third of the members of Parliament. And if you are interpreting members of Parliament to mean how Parliament is constituted, that is 275, then that comes to 91.6. So obviously we said, okay, maybe 92 members of parliament. Mm -hmm. At the end, this number is way beyond this. So it's not going to be a problem to form a quorum to carry out parliamentary business. This is where the problem comes in. In terms of voting, because if they are going to take any decision on be it e-levy or whatever it is, they would have to vote and take a decision. That says half of the MPs must be present. That is 137.5. Again, this is because we are looking at in terms of the members of parliament being 275. But if Ed Gavin's coming, I would just make the argument that they are interpreting it to mean how many members of parliament exist currently. Mm -hmm. And as far as they are concerned, the number is 271 and not 275. That would mean that they will need a little above 135 and they have 136. Absolutely. So that means that they, in their opinion, will be able to form 
that particular quorum to take that particular decision. And so all these are, are matters that are very debatable. And they, unfortunately, this was not a matter the Supreme Court settled when they just stopped the live as attorney general case, which had to do with the approval and rejection of budget, went over to the Supreme Court for determination. So there's still that lack of clarity about when we say half or one third of the members of parliament, are we referring to parliament as constituted by 275 or we mean the current numbers in terms of the members of parliament, which is which not is 275, depending on which view we hold. I mean, well, certainly it will be 271, depending yes. on how you look at it. And obviously because of the current state of affairs. Yes. Now, But if you had to go by way of what the Supreme Court has restored, then we are back to 275. Absolutely. And it was quite clear when the question was asked as to whether what was going to be the, the reaction or the response of parliament to the Supreme Court's decision on Friday. You heard the Honorable Mama Yariga the Boko Central Member of Parliament gave an answer to that, that they are not aware of any law to suspend the decision of the Speaker. And then also, the Supreme Court can make a declaration of whether an act is consistent or otherwise with the Constitution. They do not have, or they are not clothed with the powers and jurisdiction to suspend the decision of the Speaker or the decision of Parliament to that effect. And to that extent, the NDC caucus will act only on communication from the speaker and not through the media or social media for that matter. So their stance on this matter is really quite clear and how things are going to play out as well. And the question about why they, they seek to benefit from this, they've already indicated that with the commentary that the speaker gave, it was quite clear as to why this was the right path to take. And let me just remind you, that this is one that we're going to keep an eye on and do a lot more analysis on this. And the conversation continues across all media journal platforms. Stay with us on News 360 at 7 p.m. today and throughout the week beginning tomorrow. This is going to be a big one for us here across all media journal platforms here on your election command center. And then also that indication, the claim that that was made by Governor Kwame Pujai earlier, they have information that there are some persons within government who have had a meeting with elements within the military to disrupt Tuesday's sitting. It's one that we're also going to keep tabs on as well and keep you up to speed every minute of the way. So stay with us here on your election command center. And then also we do apologize once again for the interruption in your Sunday current affairs program, Hot Issues. We will make some reaction and also some provision for it as well at 10 p.m. today. Make a date with Kemeni and the former Deputy Attorney General, Dominic Ayeni. Hot issues will be played at 10 p.m. today, right after the mental program. So please make a date. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for staying with us here. I am Alfred Okanse. I'm Joseph Akabne. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>